Okay, the next thing we're going to do is called a short splice. And it's a, a way of attaching... <laughs> Charlie Bird. It's a way of attaching two um, twisted ropes together uh, to either make one longer rope or um, or a continuous loop. Um, so basically what, what's going to wind up happening is, well you can see where we have the, uh, the two constrictor hitches. We're going to join the two ropes right about there. Splice, splice this one down into into this section, and then once we're done, um, or the other way around, then splice this one down down here, and it's uh, going to form a very strong permanent joint. And actually, what we're going to do um, is, as we splice it down, what what happens is, since we're attaching uh, uh, one rope into another, it essentially makes makes this rope twice as as thick as it normally is. And uh, to make that go over top of a, a, a roller, say like a bow roller or some sort of a pulley, um, an abrupt change from this diameter to being suddenly double that diameter, um, it's, it's not a very smooth transition. So what we're going to do is put about five tucks in and then remove half the material in the strands and put another two or three tucks in. It's, a, it's called tapering a splice and it, it provides a smoother transition, so from the one diameter to a one and a half to finally the, the full two diameters. And then we'll do the same thing uh, on the other side so that it will smoothly transition back down to a single diameter here. So the way we start this is uh, basically by uh, just uh, interweaving the strands together so that uh, each strand uh, is in between its, its two neighbors. So I guess we've got one there, one there, and one there. And just uh, you know, take a moment as you do this just to, to make sure that you've got it right. So basically each strand is in, in between two neighbors. There. And in there. So I guess uh, since we've got the colored lines on this side, I'll, I'll start coming down this way. So we're going to work these two tight so their, their junctions are, are right there. And we can start by, by just holding on to this for now, even. And uh, you know, if you're finding that this is difficult to hold on to, then uh, uh, tie yourself a constrictor hitch or even uh, a piece of tape around here to, uh, to hold it in place while you work on, on this end. Um, so hey, I'll, I'll just do it by hand. We'll see how it, how it comes out. So the next thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to get rid of our, uh, our little hitch here. So you can cut it off, or if uh, if you're lucky, maybe your uh, your marlin spike will uh, will be able to uh, open it enough to uh, work it free, which we were able to do. And uh, essentially, just splice the way uh, you've been doing all all of the other ones. Go over top, uh, always going over top of the strand, splicing against the lay, and uh, and underneath and, uh, and and back up. So we've got one going. This is going to look a little bit loose um, for a moment un until we uh, we start getting the other side uh, pulling and then the whole thing will, will work up nice and tight. Okay, so that's, uh, that's one tuck. Then we can pull this opposite rope a little bit tighter, pull these guys a little bit tighter, and we'll, we'll do this again in a, in a moment and, uh, and everything will snug up and, and be looking really nice. But basically we've got one tuck in and uh, we can continue, maybe I'll, I'll get two or three going and, uh, and then perhaps we'll start on, on the other side. So let's just put another tuck, tuck in. There's one, two, three, and uh, I'll put one more, one more in, and then we'll get the other side going. Three will make it stable enough that we'll be able to work on the other side without uh, pulling this through. This is a really handy, handy splice. Um, I guess on so my first boat, I guess. Uh, 
I bought a, a length of, uh, of anchor rope and uh, subsequently decided that it wasn't long enough and wanted some more, but I didn't want to replace the whole section. So I uh, wound up doing one of these splices and uh, I'll use that for, for a couple of years. I think I made it go from, uh, I think my original section was uh, 70 feet or something. That's all I could afford to buy at the time and added another 150 or something to the end of that eventually and wound up with a, a decent anchor line. I tapered it and so it rolled over the, the bow rollers nicely. Okay, so now I'm going to just start on, on, on the other side here. And same thing, I'm just going to uh, remove this constrictor. It's not, uh, not going to be adding anything to, to the finished uh, product at all. So we'll just, uh, we'll just get rid of it. And exactly the same thing. Just start by uh, going over top and under. Same in the in the other other direction down the the other section of rope. So I'll do the same thing here. I'll get uh, two or three in, and then I'll uh, work it all tight and make it lay a little bit nicer. And then we'll start thinking about uh, getting the the taper happen. So that's the first tuck on this side. And so we're always going over top and then through. Oh, make sure you get the whole piece of rope. <laughs> All right. Of course this I haven't colorized this one for you. So maybe we'll we'll concentrate on, on the other side a little bit more. Oh, wait, what's that? Two? We'll put one more in, and then we'll, uh, we'll just make sure that they're snugged up, that the whole thing is working tight. So we've got three on each side, and of course three is the absolute bare minimum. Um, and I wouldn't trust three, certainly not for anchor, or not for lifting anything that, uh, considered to be precious, uh, including my head. You know, maybe you're not lifting anything precious, but if you're lifting it over your head, you don't want it to land on your head. Uh, well, not everyone considers my head to be all that precious. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> Anyways, give it a little roll, and you can see how it, uh, how it starts to, to lay quite nicely. So we've only got three in here. We'll probably want to put five in, at least, before we start to do our taper. If you're doing this with an anchor, I'd probably go seven and then do your taper so you wind up doing uh, 10. Yeah, you wind up using a little bit extra rope, but I think that's a small price to pay for knowing that your anchor line isn't going to part in the middle of the night when the wind picks up. Anyway, so there's three. Um, so I, I guess we'll, we'll start on this side to show you the taper. I just wonder if I've left myself enough to do a, a proper taper. We'll give it a shot. So we'll put two more in to make five, uh, five full tucks. And then what we'll do is remove half the, uh, half the strands that make up, uh, half the, uh, the yarns that make up uh, one of these strands. Uh, and then put another two or three in. And that'll finish the, uh, finish the splice. So that's four. And there's five. So five is adequate for most purposes. Like I said, if, if this is something that's going to be holding your boat, I'd go seven before starting the taper. But for now, five is good enough. So in order to do the taper, just basically uh, take your knife and uh, remove about half of these. So what do we have here? We got three on one side, four on the other. Well, let's just remove three. I'm going to leave these a little bit long here. 
because um, what we're going to wind up doing when we completely finish this is you, you'll want to melt this down. So give yourself a little bit extra. You can always trim it back later. You can actually leave it attached all the way to the end if you like. It's just to, it'll look a little bit neater as we uh, as we go if you remove it. So same thing here. Now since I decided to uh, to leave four yarns in, then we'll leave four yarns in with all of them. Once again, just uh, giving yourself a little bit extra there, we can trim it we're completely done. And same thing here. We'll leave four in. We'll leave three there. And then we'll trim it here as well. So we've got, uh, I guess there, there would be the middle. We've got five tucks through. So we'll do uh, well, two or three more, and you'll see how the how the taper works. So exactly the same uh, same pattern. No need to change anything at all. Just uh, same over and under routine. If you're working with a lot heavier rope than this, you can actually uh, uh, taper it twice, say remove a third, and then uh, remove another third further on down, but it, it's really not necessary to, to go to that kind of extent to, uh, to make the taper. So there's one. Strand that's uh, trying to escape. Let's make sure they all go through. And there's the last one. Yeah, let's pull them tight. So hopefully you can see how the uh, the, the diameter changes uh, as it slims down. And uh, I guess I mean we, we could do a, a third a third tuck as well. Maybe I will do a third tuck. Might be easier to see the uh, the the uh, the transition. Okay, so to, to finish this nicely, of course we'd uh, trim here as well and, and melt the edges, maybe give it a whipping, and uh, same thing with these, we trim them down, give them a melt so that they can't pull back through, and uh, we do the same on this side here, and perhaps I'll, I'll continue this and show you the finished product, and that's uh, called a short splice. Okay, so here's our uh, finished short splice. Um, you can see, I guess, uh, right around, uh, I guess right here, is uh, where these two lines uh, join. And uh, you can see we've uh, uh, spliced the, the one with the, the colored ends down and along. And I've uh, just thrown a, a rough whipping on there. And of course we've done the exact same thing on this side. And the reason for the different colored whipping twine, as you'll see a little later down the uh, down the video, is that we've uh, um, shown how to do this uh, whipping, and it just used a contrasting color. So I guess what you'll see with this uh, splice is that we've got here just about double the diameter of this line, and so that the the advantage of tapering the way we did, and the the taper starts around here, so we're going from one diameter to about one and a half diameters up to the full diameter 
then back down to about one and a half, and then back to one diameter. So if this is going over a bow roller, there isn't a sudden transition uh, from from you know original diameter to double. It's uh, it's you know more a little bit more gradual, and it just tends to go over uh, rollers quite nicely. And uh, you know wh while I did mention that I I use use this on my first boat for uh, for anchor line, it's uh, I mean, if at all possible, it's best to use one contiguous piece of line and not have to splice bits together. But, uh, you know, when you're young and poor, you sometimes you just have to do what you've got. <laughs> do what you can. So, that's about it. I guess uh, the only other thing to mention is that at the, the taper points, um, I basically just uh, trim these after, you know, giving it a good roll and making it, you know, a few, a few yanks and getting it uh, about the right... Uh, the fi final dimensions. Just trim these things down, and uh, and gave them a melt. You, you can use. Um, I mean, if you're really careful and you're uh, gifted with it, I guess you could use a lighter. But you run the the, the risk of damaging the uh, the rope around the area that you're trying to melt. Uh, another easy way of doing it is to use a soldering iron, uh, which works really well. And um, if you don't have access to one, or if you just want to be quick about it, uh, what I do is just take the uh, the end of my knife, put it on the st uh, stove under the, the, the flame, get it nice and hot, and, and then uh, can just melt just exactly the areas that I want to melt. Anyways, there's a uh, short splice.